Hello and welcome to a session on smart contracts. In this session, we first will cover the basics of the blockchain technology to set a foundation for the topic of smart contracts. Subsequently, we will present the most prominent use cases of smart contracts outside of the cryptosphere. And finally, we will show applications of smart contracts in decentralized finance. First of all, in order to understand what smart contracts actually are, we have to understand what the blockchain technology is and how it works. Please find in the top left corner the legend for the current figure. Also don't worry if there are unknown words or concepts like the hash value. We will cover all those terms in the next slides. So to start off, the blockchain, which is also known as decentralized ledger, is nothing else than a long string of connected blocks which store various kinds of data. These blocks contain, for example, the previous blocks, hash value, the Merkle root, which is the hash of all hashes of all transactions that are part of a block, and a nonce, which is a random number. With cryptocurrencies, this data is, for example, about coin balances or who sent a transaction to whom. Since this data is stored decentrally, there is no single entity that is in control of the network. Every participant of a blockchain has to have a copy of the whole blockchain, so every past and current transaction, on their device. This creates transparency because every member can examine all ongoing and past transactions in the network. Also, every member can see all the transactions. That doesn't necessarily mean you as a participant or any other person knows who sent or who received the balance of the transaction. Most blockchains are not anonymous, but rather pseudonymous, which means every member has an alias, their public key, under which they are known for the entire network. This means, should any person know your public key and your name, they automatically can find out everything about your past transactions. Now, as for the functionality of the blockchain, so-called miners have to find the next hash value to gain the right to add the next block to the chain. Would there be no activity by the miners, no blocks would be added which in turn means the blockchain is offline and no new transactions will be accepted and verified. This would have a halt of all transactions as a consequence. Thus, miners will get a block reward for adding new blocks to the chain, which acts as an incentive for them to keep finding new hash values. We have mentioned hash values, but didn't clarify yet what it actually is, you can think of it as a one-way street. A hash function takes inputs of any length, but always has an output of fixed length, which are 64 characters here. The same input always results in the same output, but you cannot guess the input only by seeing the output, unless you knew the input already. In connection to our blockchain explanation, the miners have to find the input for this hash value simply by trying random inputs until the output fits their target hash. This target hash generally contains some composition of the previous block's hash value, the transactions that are proposed to be added in the new block, and a nonce, which is simply a randomly generated number. Metaphorically speaking, the miners have to solve a puzzle in which they brute force their way into finding the correct inputs that will generate the target hash value. There could be additional requirements that miners have to follow, like finding a hash value with at least two zeros in the first two digits. The difficulty is, however, not directly influenced by the number of leading zeros. At this point, you should be familiar with the bare basics of what the blockchain technology is and how transactions are validated. At the basic level, smart contracts represent pieces of software, 
not contracts in the legal sense, which are executed by a network of nodes using a consensus mechanism based on the pre-programmed contract code. The transacting parties agree on the terms and desired outcome of the contract. Then, the agreement is coded into business logic that means if-then-else clauses. Finally, the contract is encrypted into blockchain. In a blockchain, whenever consensus is reached on authentication and verification, the smart contract is added to the block. Network updates after execution in all network computers are automatically updated so that their ledger copy contains the latest smart contract transaction. Once added to the blockchain, the transaction cannot be changed. This adds a layer of security and trust because the relevant parties don't have to trust each other. They only have to trust the smart contract by knowing exactly what will be happen if both parties fulfill their obligations. Now that we mentioned one of the biggest perks of smart contracts, which is the security and trust, we will also cover other chances and risks of this technology. Behind smart contracts is no central authority which decides whether a contract is being executed or not. Smart contracts work completely autonomous which is reflected in their speed, efficiency and accuracy. The sense of trust and security comes from the previously mentioned transparency on the blockchain. Each and every smart contract can be viewed by any member of a blockchain. It would take immense computing power for any hacker to change the current state of a blockchain and thus the smart contracts deployed on it. Another pleasant side effect of smart contracts is the potential to save handling fees since no intermediaries are incorporated into a deal between two parties. Contrary to the chances smart contracts have to offer, there are also several risks that any member of a blockchain has to keep in mind. Due to the conditional character of smart contracts, they cannot activate themselves, which means they require an external event like a transaction. This event has to happen on the blockchain itself. A transaction happening outside of a blockchain will not trigger anything. The way blockchains and smart contracts work requires every participant to have a digital copy of the chain, which makes this technology inefficient in terms of the data that needs to be stored. This particular characteristic of the blockchain technology guarantees decentralization and security, however. Another issue in the present and foreseeable future will be data protection, as it is not so easy for smart contracts to delete stored data. Remember, they are permanently stored on the blockchain, as is the data connected to the smart contract. Last but not least, the possibly biggest risk of smart contracts is the potential of bugs in the underlying code of a contract. Once a smart contract is deployed, it is hard, if not impossible, to remedy this mistake. Many hackers have exploited bugs in a smart contract to make huge profits at the cost of the contractual parties in the contract. Before we discuss the applications of smart contracts in decentralized finance, we will shortly show the use case outside of decentralized finance, or short, DeFi. IBM and their proprietary blockchain uses smart contracts to facilitate international trade by increasing the trust between all parties. As we have learned, the parties don't have to trust anyone except the smart contract itself. Supply chains may also be enhanced by the use of smart contracts, for example, when it comes to supply chain transparency in the transport of temperature-controlled pharmaceuticals. Now for the last part of this presentation, we will discuss three of the most prominent applications in decentralized finance, starting with tokens and their issuance. A token is nothing other than a smart contract that is deployed on a blockchain. An example for a token is UNI or UNI, which is a smart contract deployed on the Ethereum blockchain. 
there are mainly two categories of tokens. Fungible tokens are interchangeable, which means they are exactly the same. You cannot tell them apart. Fungible tokens are normally issued in what is called an initial coin offering, an event comparable to equity financing. Non-fungible tokens, or also known as NFTs, are not interchangeable in the sense of that they could have different values attached to them. NFTs are generally created in groups called collections. Every collection or group of NFTs is its own smart contract and each NFT in a collection can be uniquely identified by an index or ID that is attached to it. At this point, we feel obliged to inform you that empirical research shows a gap between experienced and inexperienced NFT investors. So much that experienced investors generally earn higher profits and inexperienced NFT investors could lose everything. In case you have already watched the video on crypto exchanges, you will be familiar with decentralized exchanges and might be surprised to hear that these peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces are nothing but smart contracts. As opposed to centralized exchanges, smart contracts replace the intermediary of a centralized exchange and act similarly like an escrow service. Furthermore, a decentralized exchange is not one single smart contract, but rather multiple contracts working in unison. Some define the properties of the exchange itself, whereas others define what is called a liquidity pool. These pools are the heart of a decentralized exchange, as they provide traders with the necessary liquidity to trade pairs of tokens. Since there is no central authority which is responsible for determining the equilibrium price, an automated market maker function is used to calculate the exchange rates automatically. Last but not least, protocols for loanable funds, so-called PLF, are also known as crypto lending applications that allow any investor to lend crypto decentrally without any banks needed in between. The interest on such loans are however paid in terms of the underlying asset, which means if an investor lends one Ether for a period of one year at an interest rate of 1%, he or she will receive a total of 1.01 Ether at the end of the lending period. A characteristic of PLFs or smart contracts is that they cannot force a borrower to repay their debt, which might sound like a serious issue at first. PLFs, however, have to be over collateralized to account for the possible case of the borrower defaulting on the loan. Over collateralization means that the borrower has to deposit more than 100% of what they are lending as a security. This brings us to the end of the presentation, at which point we will quickly revisit the key messages of each chapter. Smart contracts are pieces of code, scripts, that are placed on top of a blockchain. Smart contracts cannot activate themselves. They require an external event, such as a transaction. They also cannot be activated by events happening outside the blockchain they are deployed on. Tokens are smart contracts deployed on a blockchain. You have fungible and non-fungible tokens, so-called NFTs. A liquidity pool is a smart contract which holds ownership of two different tokens and facilitates the trading of the two assets. Please consider that all investments in crypto or capital markets could be at the risk of total loss. Thank you very much for your attention. For more details, you may also read the chapters Cryptocurrency and Blockchain in the book Fintech Business Models. Thank you.